Great to see everybody. You ever have that experience? So you're driving to the grocery store, it's an ordinary day, and you, you're turning on your radio just to pass the time by. There's no one to call on the Bluetooth. So you hear something on the radio that's so good that when you get to the store, you park your car, because you, you just have to hear the rest of it. Now, for me, usually that's that I hear an incredible musical performance, and I'll want to hear who it was and hear, hear the entire thing. But this one particular time a few weeks ago, it was actually an interview of someone from NASCAR on our local sports talk radio station in Charlottesville. And they were saying that, surprisingly to me, I always considered NASCAR to be this incredibly vibrant, growing sport. Uh, I was never a part of the audience, but I always knew that they, they filled these racetracks with six figures worth of people. And when they were having a particular event, uh, millions of TV sets were hooked to them. Uh, and for the longest time, for decades, they were growing. Lately, the audience has actually been declining. I was surprised to hear that. And so were they. So they devoted about $5 million worth of research into why young people weren't watching auto races anymore. What they found was that people have this different attitude with their cars now. And I'm, I'm guilty of the same, where you get a car, it works for a while. And yeah, you get, a, you get the oil changed, you get, you get the brakes fixed. But once it becomes inconvenient to keep it maintained, you find another one, you let someone else deal with it. Whereas before, they had what they called the love affair with the automobile, where people really were getting under, their, un, under the hood, looking at their engines, replacing parts, and that, and that their car might last more of their lifetime, to the point where it felt very personal for them. So watching someone else uh, design their own car meant a lot more. Uh, my place within music as an oboist <laughs> is particularly well angled to understand this, since it, I, when I took up the oboe, I didn't know what it is. Uh, it's a what's that instrument. And if anyone knows one thing about the oboe, um, it's that we make our own reeds, uh, and we have to. So we have this experience of actually taking material, raw material, and before we can play that a that tunes the orchestra at the beginning of every concert, before we can play any of the wonderful solos we have in the literature, uh, we have to make the reads ourselves. And it's incredibly difficult to do. But I saw one TED Talk that made a big impact on me by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, where he was talking about the nature of human happiness and his discovery that people are incredibly happy when, not when they're at perfect leisure, uh, and just lounging around, but actually when they're doing something incredibly challenging and that doesn't always necessarily go well. And at those moments when something difficult uh, is matched with a level of achievement, they use so much of their brain power and so much of their spirit that he calls it flow. Uh, and so, mu so much capacity is used that you lose your sense that you're a separate being from whatever you're doing. And that's how people can forget their troubles or whatever petty things are bothering them into the challenge of what they're doing, even if it doesn't always go well. Uh, and oboists are constantly faced with this. Uh, we use this material, Arundo Donax. It grows in wine climates. You can get it from France, South America, Spain, California, parts of China. And no two pieces are alike. And from day, from day to day, uh, you never know. The reed might be flat, uh, and you have to bite it up. It might be sharp, and you have to really muscle yourself open in order to get the pitch down. Uh, it might be incredibly resistant to air. Uh, so you might get a pounding headache trying to make it look easy uh, for the audience who's there to enjoy it. And, and as, we, as we craft these reeds ourselves, we have, we, have this, we, we, we have this experience that's a lot like when you watch the Food Network. And you, uh, you, watch a, you watch a fine chef seek out the greatest ingredients in the world. We're always trying different kinds of cane. We need the knife skills of a sushi chef, uh, which involves ri the right equipment, but also the discipline to keep them sharp so that, so that you, don't, you don't end up cutting yourself from having to press too hard. And I have a scar on my left thumb. Most oboists have a little bit of battle scars. But, but then we, we get to actually get into the artistry of it. Uh, and we need precision, like if, if any of you even have baked cookies and you know some things are a quarter teaspoon or a third of a teaspoon or a half, we deal mostly in millimeters, but certain parts of the process, we deal in hundredths of a millimeter. 
Uh, and so I have, the, I have these tools to measure that. And I measured a hair off my head. And it was five hundredths of a millimeter. And if I'm more than one hundredth of a millimeter off, in certain parts of read processing, the read's totally unusable. So we need to pay very close attention. And then when you get to the finishing stages of it, and this is when it gets to be a little individual, some people like a little resi more resistance in their reads or a little less. And this is like making a sauce, where no matter what cookbook you're looking at, they'll say, ah, put in salt until it's right, or a little more oregano till it's right. Uh, but for us, if you put in too much salt, it's all ruined. Uh, because if you make it easier, it hurts the tuning. If you make it a little more in tune, it makes it a little tougher to play. So we're constantly looking for this balancing act. And finally, one of the things that oboists do when they get together that, that some, some people might not appreciate, it's, like, it's sort of like wine or even barbecue, where there are these regional styles of oboe playing based on how we all make our reeds. In America, we use a certain design of reeds. In Europe, it's totally different. But even within America, oboists can get together and try and guess if a recording they're hearing blind came from Philadelphia or Cleveland. And there are, there are all these systems around it. And, and so it ends up being a quality of oboe that's difficult. We spend most of our practicing hours making our reads. But it, it also makes it personal. It means each of us gets our own individual sound. And when it works, those few times a year when you actually have a read that you're playing on easily, no complaints, nothing feels better. And the rest of the time, you're sort of you're making do and you're enjoying the fact that it's music, which for me is especially empowering. Because to play a wind instrument, um, I'm surprised about it every day. I grew up with very severe asthma. Uh, and at worst, I had a case of whooping cough, pertussis, uh, which for a few years of my life was a succession of nebulizing three times a day uh, and, and often getting these really brutal attacks, sometimes hospitalizations. Uh, and the struggle to be able to breathe was a big part of my life. And now in my capacity as a teacher and, and as a player, my job is all about controlling the breath. Or within, within the yoga tradition, which has meant a lot to me, uh, they call it pranayama, um, which isn't just about the lungs. It's about the extension of the energy uh, is the actual translation that when we breathe, it's a part of our mind, it's a part of our spirit that we could never do without. And when I was going through asthma attacks, someone who hasn't had one might think that it's a struggle to take more air into the body. But for me, it was a struggle to let air out of the body, which turned out to be an incredible benefit when learning oboe that I had learned in life-threatening circumstances to release air and not necessarily to take a ton of air in. If you're, if you're at the coffee place, you can actually get one of those little stirring straws and try to take a huge breath in and let, let all your air out through one of those little straws. You can't get all of it out. So oboists spend as much time breathing out as they do breathing in, which is counterintuitive for most, most people. They figure if you're playing a long line of music, 30, 40 seconds long, it's at, you're actually going to need to take all these breaths in. But the way that I've learned how to teach my students and myself is that it, all the lung training in the world is no substitute for being able to show your mind when the doubt mechanism is wrong. And there's this very clear sign when you're playing a long phrase and you get 15, 20, maybe 30 seconds into it. And your brain says, you need more air. And it's always based on truth. We can't leap tall buildings in a single bound. But we actually have a little bit more air than we think all the time. And so what I like to have my students do, what I like to do, is when my brain says that, I pick up my left foot. And I'm, saying, I'm acknowledging, OK, brain, you may be right, but you're probably not that right. And I see how much longer I can play. And so I have these daily experiences where I realize that my brain's wrong about what's possible. My brain's wrong about what I'm capable of doing. As a kid who grew up with asthma, the fact that I'm playing oboe all the time and teaching these amazing students at the University of Virginia, actually all of whom are studying it to enter another field, to face up to this challenge so that one day when they're surgeons and dentists and lawyers, nothing, nothing will seem quite as difficult as it might to someone who, who's never faced a challenge like this, and there are so many forms of it, uh, because they know that when that mechanism happens in their brain that tells them that something's impossible, They'll just push a little bit farther every day, and they'll know that on the other end, there's something very rewarding. 
And I know a lot of you understand that very well. Thanks so much.